from the beginning, I, I really found it important for me to make a film that was open for people to see it in different ways and, and sort of take with it from, from the film what they need. Hi, I'm Marianne Redpath, head of Berlinale Generation, and I'm very happy today to talk to Robin Petri, who is the director of the profound and literally eye-opening documentary work From the Wild Sea, which has been selected for Generation 14 Plus. Hello, welcome, nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to having our talk. Robin Petri, director of From the Wild Sea. In a few sentences, what is your film about? So the film is about this complex collision between human and nature. Um, it follows a team of wildlife rescue volunteers along the coastline of the British Isles and the Netherlands. And the problems that they're trying to save these animals from are mainly man-made. So that's like things like oil spills and fishing net entanglements, climate change, this kind of thing. Um, so the film follows the processes of trying to rescue and rehabilitate the animals so they can be let out into the wild again. But it actually follows these processes both from the perspective of the volunteers, but also from the perspective of the animals. So there are these two perspectives that the film is switching between. What, what were the, the biggest challenges in, in making the film? And also, how did you stay resilient over that process? I think the most difficult thing in making a film about this particular topic is that you never know where the animals strand next. You never know what to expect. And you just have to be there actually at the peak season of rescues, which is in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. So the weather is really bad. There's one storm after the other. Um, you have to drive through these storms, be there on the beach, try to, to just be on call really at all times. So it takes a lot of patience and waiting and trying to drive through the storm. And maybe there's no animal when you get there anyway, because it went into the water again. So it was all in vain. And then waiting for another stranding, it was, yeah. It was definitely not the easiest film to make, but but we were actually, I mean, you can say lucky, of course, it's not so nice for the animals when they come ashore and they're hurt, but we had some pretty extraordinary moments. Uh, for instance, a whale stranding, which is quite rare. Um, so it was really worth the wait. <laughs> um, so who were your, aesthetically speaking and uh, formally speaking, and in terms of which images you choose to make and how you chose to, to, to show your film on the whole, who were your allies and what did they contribute to that? First of all, my photographer, uh, Maria Grazia Goya, was, she was actually um, also helping me on previous films, also working with with animal perspective in a different way, in a different story and context. But um, we've been working together and developing the animal perspective um, for many years, actually. So it's not the easiest to try to just get the framing right, the camera right, to try to capture these moments of like an intimate moment that you share with an animal. You're looking at them through the lens, but they're also looking back. And it really, it's necessary to have this sensibility towards these kinds of moments to capture them. So. In the film, I really see people, humanity, humankind as someone who is at once both the problem and the solution. So it's, it's as if there are two kinds of people, if you can say in the film, there's the people that you see directly on the screen who are trying to, to do something about these problems, these man-made problems and try to save the animals. But there's also another implicit presence of, of humanity really, which is 
like present in the plastic pieces in the ocean, in the fishing nets that are out there, the oil spills, all these problems, it's is always lingering there somehow behind the images that we see um, because we're causing all these problems as like collectively as a species, we're causing all these problems. Um, and I think, I mean, rescuing one seal here and there is of course not going to solve all these problems, but I really admire that there's someone out there who are trying to do something. And for the individual animal, of course, it means like it's between life and death. But um, but of course, this is much bigger than that. I mean, we need like a much bigger intervention, really. We need to stop the problems at the root. We need to not just save the animals from the oil spill. We need to not have any oil spills in the first place. So... I really hope that the film can inspire like a positive change in this regard that we really consider where we're headed. You really feel firsthand in the film, the effects of climate change, which was so important for me because it's very different to, to just hear on the news a fact such as, oh, the weather is getting worse, but it's not, the same as, as really being there on the beach. I wanted to create this moment of like being in the moment on the beach in the film and, and really seeing the impact of these storms that we have also partly created or were part of creating this weather. What would you like audiences to take away from the film? What thoughts would you like them to have? I really do hope that the film inspires people to to consider this future that we're having with wildlife and consider also their lives and, and the conditions for them on this planet. We're really not alone. There's so much life beyond the human race. And I really, I feel like there's, why shouldn't they have a right to also have a good life here? I mean, we're mm -hmm. really not alone. And, and we also have a responsibility or at least a moral responsibility to, to be respectful of other life forms, I think. And, and I hope that this film can inspire us to, to really take action. I think we need to take a much bigger action towards bettering, improving the future. Um, we have so many climate related issues <laughs> at the moment. Yes, things are definitely changing and shifting and uh, we all wish we could have that crystal ball and to look into the future. Uh -huh. do, you, do you have any thoughts about the fact that, uh, you know, the future without these cultural spaces, what difference that might make to your work or your thinking about cinema altogether? Yes, I've, I've been thinking about it a lot, actually, as a filmmaker who likes to work the way I like to do. I like to make films that are very directed towards like the theater, the big screen and mm -hmm. long takes and a slower pace, which is not necessarily the most streaming friendly format, if you can <laughs> say it that way. So in that regard, I really, really hope that there's in the future still going to be a space for this kind of work because I think it's it's just as important as as faster paced, more streaming friendly content really. Um, so yeah, I'm also thinking about this because I don't know if, if people are going to get used to streaming much more, um, how that's going to impact the theaters out there, mm. maybe for many years in the future. Thanks for the talk. It's been really enlightening for me and I do look forward to hopefully meeting up with you in June here in Berlin where we will stand together on a stage and present your film to an, a live audience. Let's keep our fingers crossed that that's going to happen. Thanks very I really much. Hope so. I really hope yeah. so. Thank you very much.